and the arts fountain and entertainment. Uh, so I'll just be reading a quick um, little thingy from this book called The Mystery of Art, Coming and Others uh, in the Image of God by Jonathan Jackson. He's an Orthodox uh, Christian. And he is also an actor and musician, which is very close to what I do. Um, here he says, the power of art and culture, right? Damon of Athens said, when modes of music change, the fundamental laws of the state always change with them. Artists cultivate our culture. Politicians can write as many laws as they wish, but they will never change the heart of the culture. This belongs to the artists, and we do battle in the heart for the soul of society. Our culture often produces dehumanizing art, which promotes the, des the, the desensitization and alienation of our young. If we as a society continue to applaud artists who produce unreasonably violent, gory, or pornographic music and films, we should not be surprised when we see the desecration of our culture. The artist has an incredible influence on the zeitgeist of culture. An artist is one of the caretakers of the spiritual health of humanity. Producing films in which pornography is depicted in a comedic manner or in which the systematic slaughter of innocent people is glorified changes the culture. The artist, however, is not a prude. He is not afraid to show the depths of darkness or the honesty of life. But when he is called to portray the ugliness of humanity, as an actor would, he will not glorify it. He will not call it beautiful or praiseworthy. He will weep as he paints and tremble as he sings. The spiritual artist will pray for the life of the world as he portrays its desperate need for him. So also one of the things that God has shown me art is prophecy, right? Uh, I think a lot of us probably know that art changes atmospheres, whether it's a dance that you see, a song that you hear, being in a theater, you know, or just looking at the visual work of art. Um, you know, art is able to hide spiritual truths in metaphor. At times when it is impossible or in ineffective to speak plainly or directly, an artist is able to speak through metaphor. He is able to see revelation or kingdom truths in the hearts of audiences who may not otherwise be open to, say, a literal message. Which is one of the reasons why Jesus often spoke in story form, or what we know as parables. I love the uh, Matthew 13 message version of the Bible. It reads says that in the following. Whenever someone has a ready heart, insights and understandings flow freely. But if there's no readiness, any trace of receptivity soon disappears. This is why I tell stories. Yes, to create readiness to nudge the people towards insight. So this is the message version of the red letter of what Jesus spoke, right? Um, the spiritual artist carries God's character, nature, truth, love, joy, including a sense of humor, into the world. Art is prophetic in that the artist communes with the Holy Spirit and like an alchemist almost, translates it into art. It is no wonder that Bezalel, an artist and culture creator, yes, he was the first MOC, Minister of Culture, was the first person to be filled with the Spirit of God. In the New Testament, we're filled. In the Old Testament, that most people got, got rest on, like, you know, rest on Saul or rest on David. But this is the first person recorded in the Bible to be filled with the Holy Spirit and God chose an artist. Why? Okay. Exodus 31, 1 to 5. When the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, the tribe of Judah, and I filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, and understanding, in knowledge, and in all manners of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold, silver, bronze, and cotton jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. What was this work that Bezalel was given to build the tabernacle? What is the tabernacle? It's the place where we commune with God and where God's presence is pleased to rest. So there's something about art that invites the presence of God to rest. And Bezalel built very specifically according to the blueprints that were given him. If it's 13 cubits, it's 13 cubits. Okay, don't negotiate. So, <laughs> it's something something in my journey as well, and many here who collaborates with me often, it's um, sometimes we hear a piece of music and we need to record it, or we see something we need to record it. It's about being true to the artistic heavenly blueprint. So there's something about translating some a prophetic message, and, and what's prophetic essentially is God's heart to people, right? Into the earth. So um, I want to share with you also that... Um, of what I sense the coming revival would be like. 
in the in respect to the others. So um, I was just, I want to read this verse from Zechariah one twenty. It says, "Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. What are these coming to do?" I asked, and he replied, "The craftsmen have come to terrify them." And throw down these horns of the nations that have lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter it. Why craftsmen? Why not uh, warriors or engineers or military, right? Why craftsmen? As I mentioned earlier, there's a, there's a great influence that, that you know, we have great influence on culture. I also want to share a word from my friend, a quick one. Uh, she, she shared this with me a while back. She went into a conference, a church conference, and they sat her front row. And she was, she found it really odd because usually the pastor sit in the front row. And then she turned around and she saw pastor sitting on the second row. And then in that moment, the Lord spoke to her and said, the next move of God will be led by the artists in front and the pastors will get the back support from them. I think that's really important as well because there are too many artists who have just gone amok. And, and, you know, and then, the, the, then there's the artist who's just like, everything is so, there's no inspiration, right? So you, but you need, you need, genuine authentic artists but pastors behind why i always talk about it and when i talk about discipleship for artists it's an easy one to remember the word art comes out of the word heart so anything that an artist produces, whether it's a sculpture a painting a piece of music reflects what's inside so it's one of the other fullness of the heart right the mouth the hands speak so to speak and so it's really important that artists are disciple as well uh also, another friend, uh, another proper friend said, she's probably going to call, I'm not sure, but she also released a, word a couple of weeks ago to our rallies that um, the singer-songwriters will be leading the battle. And this is consistent with scripture in Second Chronicles 2021. Whoa, 2021. Chapter 20, verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy and joy forever. What happens next in the next few verses is that before, so they put the uh, first line of defense, then they put the singers in front. And you're like, singers don't have any weapons. Oh my God, like, are they going to like die or something? But as they're marching and they're singing, what happened in the enemy's can before they even reach the enemy, the enemies go, destroyed each other. So I'm going to pray for an artistic renaissance. I'm going to pray. Thank you, Lord, for the work today. Thank you, God, that you've gathered this, this small group of people. But, Lord, you don't need 3,000. You just need 300, God. And thank you, God, for this, these people who have been tested by fire and by water, God. And I declare that this is an Isaiah 60, 61 time, to 61 time. Isaiah 60, deep darkness covers the earth, but the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. Now is the time, church, to rise up. Now is that time. It's the very, you know, um, was that, that little albatross, Albatross, they don't flap, okay? They glide. And the, they fly higher when the wind is stronger and the waves are stronger. But a regular bird would just say, ah, right? So we are albatrosses. So don't flap, soar. Flapping is flesh effort, soar on the wings of the Holy Spirit. So deep darkness covers the earth, but we will rise above. Isaiah 61, you have anointed me to bind the broken heart and set the captives free. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus, all the artists in Singapore and worldwide, Father God, that you will first pursue their hearts with too many warriors on the battleground who do not know who they are. We need sons, we need huyos, mature sons on the battleground. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, as you pursue their hearts and you heal the wounds, may they be effective warriors for your kingdom, warriors that will paint, warriors that will write poetry, that will sing songs, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Warriors that will write plays, that will dance and sing to your glory and speak with your truth in this world. Thank you, Father God. I'm, I'm believing God for artistic renaissance in Singapore and the full world. Lord, I want to repent on behalf of my industry. The first thing I want to repent for, Father God, is the idolatry of the love of man, especially for entertainers, influencers, actors, singers. The more likes we get, the more famous we get, the more money we get. But that is not your way, God. That is the world's way. And your kingdom is the inverted kingdom. Thank you for God. We do not perform for identity. We perform from identity. We do not perform from for significance, we perform from significance, God. We do not go out on the Hollywood sets and fight people who's more pretty, who's... No, we, fo we focus on our lane. I pray that the artists will know and be so rooted in their identity. They're not looking left and right, but they're focusing on their lane. Thank you, God. 
focus on you and God. And they'll sing the songs that you want them to sing. They'll write the songs that you want them to write. They'll paint the things. And when they come together, I think, wow, the body of Christ will just be so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. I repent for the love of the, idol the idolatry of the love of men that we would trade. We would trade into things that you don't want us to trade in. We would, we would do a commercial for smoking or a commercial for I don't know what that we don't even believe in. We will send them that, that we have treated. Yes, we have treated, I would say, with the enemy. When we, when we, when we accept money to send out a message that is not aligned with God's heart, I think that's really important. So God, I repent for the love of human approval. Let us be free from the love of human approval. Like Lou Engel says, if we have Babylon in our hearts, we cannot take ground in Babylon. So Lord, will we find burn it all up? It's a dangerous prayer, but you want it. Burn it all up. Thank you, Jesus. And also, go with the flow. Yes, doing just this project, projects and assignments that are not in line with kingdom will. No. Lord, second thing I want to repent for is for the perversion of God-given sexuality in India. This is really on my heart. Thank you, God, that you bring back the renaissance of purity and truth. This is the thing that people in the world think that purity, they equate purity with crudeness. Like, submit to them. Purity is power. A vial or something, if it's pure. Essential oils. The more pure it is, the more powerful it is. Purity, purity is potency. Because when we have purity, we're doing it according to God's design. Now, sexuality is made for covenant, for marriage. But the world has taken it, Father God. And we've just done all kinds of things with it. When I walk on the MRT, I see a person selling hair product, but they're naked. Why do they have to be naked? It's the hair. Like, it's not normal. Why is it becoming normal? So, Lord, I repent on behalf of my industry, Lord. I ask you to take away all that sexual impurity, God. That people are looking to the wrong things for comfort. <sighs> It really grieves me when I go into a theater show and they do they, they portray premarital pre sex for just because it's normal. It's not normal. It's not your design. Father God, I declare in the name of Jesus that from here henceforth you will raise up artists, actors, directors, writers that will make films, that will make theater shows, that will sing songs, that will portray godly sexuality, God. Because we are not prudes. You know, hey, biblical sexy timing. It's just biblical, right? So, Lord, let's just celebrate sexuality as we made it. Thank you, God. That is beautiful. The Song of Solomon is, it's a book. It's a beautiful book. It's made for covenant. So, Father God, I pray that you just do a huge Marie Kondo and a huge spring cleaning of my industry, God. My heart is for my friends. My friends. They are my friends, God. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Yes, so in the name of Jesus, I declare an artistic renaissance in Singapore and in the rest of the world. And where film, music, theater, visual arts, dance, literature will bring forth God's truth, love, joy, freedom, and set the captives free. Just last thing, a word to the artist who's in this call. I charge you, do not trade your God-given talent for a ill-gotten gain of love because everything is a trade. Be responsible with your gift. Use it to bring truth. Set the captives free and bring people joy. You set the culture. You set the tone of a society. If a lawyer is expected to use his gifts for the betterment of society, as one would hopefully do, and a doctor is expected to use his practice for good, as one would hopefully do, make no mistake that the kind of power you have as an artist for the betterment or degradation of humanity. Use it well and enjoy the artistic process. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Yulin. Yeah. Let's continue to...